So I'm excited to talk with you today about eSIM and iSIM technology. Maybe we can start with eSIM. I think uh, poised for a breakout year in 2023 on the back of Apple's announcement last year. Give me a little context and a little description of some of the products that your OEM partners are putting into market. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, with eSIM and iSIM, I think we see an evolution to, towards products that were not cellular before that can be cellular now, right? I think because of the stronger integration uh, inside the device because of really the definition of a SIM fit for purpose inside a product, we are able to reach integration level that is uh, uh, unseen so far. And so concrete example of that would be in the smart logistics, for example, uh, we've been having a product that's coming to market uh, for several years now, the smart label type of product, which is ability to track an actual package or asset uh, really directly uh, individually rather than in a truck or on a boat or something like that or in a container. That's one. Uh, also in the more consumer space, we see new products coming to market such as uh, the dog collar. It's been kind of a, an IoT pipe dream for many years, but now it's actually becoming to a form factor that is usable, right? Uh, it's uh, long battery life. Uh, can uh, detect, you know, movement, etc., in a pretty efficient way, and uh, we are getting some some really interesting traction around this type of products. Then another innovation that we've seen this year, especially, uh, I would say, is the uh, convergence between cellular and satellite as well. Uh, and satellite uh, NTN functionality requires also a SIM card authentication, uh, for example. So. We've uh, a partner with Skylo notably uh, and uh, some of uh, integrator of this technology such as uh, uh, Bullet with uh, the Motorola uh, Satellite Link product, which is a kind of add-on companion device uh, that you plug into your smartphone to get satellite connectivity to a messaging. Uh, so when you're out of coverage with your family on a camping trip or you're an outdoor guy, you can have this type of connectivity when you need it, especially for maybe emergency situation. So this is great to see this kind of innovation fueling uh, uh, the, the market. And all that started, I would say, if I look back five years ago, uh, with the statement from the MNOs to say, how do I get more devices onto my network? And especially new type of devices, you know, not your like connected car or maybe existing cellular product, but new ones. And so we're starting to really see this wave of new type of product like this. And then on iSIM, I could use a bit of a history lesson. And I know Keegan, the pioneer in the space. So maybe you can take me through sort of the development cycle and give me an idea of what to expect in the coming years. Sure. So. This year, we celebrate five years of ISIM. Uh, we actually announced when uh, Keegan was part of ARM five years ago, 2018 MWC, the launch of ISIM as a concept uh, back in the day. And through the following year, we spent a lot of time and effort to convince the MNO that we meet the security requirement that they know and have with the classical SIM or eSIM, right? They can trust that it's a solid, secure platform that can be tested, it can be standard. Uh, and then a year after, we launched uh, innovation demonstration products such as the smart label, uh, notably with Vodafone, uh, Alter, Sony, Sony Computer, and, uh, and other companies, Bayer, notably. Uh, and since then, I would say, after these two years of seeding, educating, now it's about uh, having the total ecosystem with cellular module player, uh, chipset makers, who can enable this concept of ready to connect hardware. So now you are an integrated of uh, cellular technology. You can pick a cellular module with some connectivity baked in through eSIM or iSIM and launch a product like a dog collar, like a smart label. So now we are in the phase of accelerating uh, the number of connectivity service providers, whether they are MNOs or MVNOs, to be enabled on eSIM and iSIM bandwagon, really. We see a strong uh, adoption within the IoT CSP specialists. So both profiles are, are really converting to that, uh, to that model of uh, being able to have the SIM functionality baked early in the product. We are not necessarily always selling SIMs to MNOs and MVNOs. We are also 
selling the same function directly into the device and the hardware maker and then connecting them to the MNOs. So that's a really change in supply chain. So we've learned about eSIM, ISIM, development history, and the outlook, but give me an idea of what CSPs need to be thinking about today in terms of really monetizing this emerging economy of things. Sure. Yeah, it's a great question because you, you can see that there is a lot of changes into the CSP ecosystem. If they focus only on connectivity, it's a bit hard to differentiate. And I think we start to see with our partner on CSPs a desire to invest the applicative territory notably on security as an example. So far, uh, we have a product called IoT Safe, uh, an open IoT Safe, which is a standard, right? But it allows to provide applicative security on the basis of a SIM, eSIM or iSIM, as an example. So that allows you to basically offer additional service as a CSP uh, to uh, your uh, customers, as an example, okay? Uh, so. You, you, you do have uh, this need for, for stronger security across the board. Uh, we, we, we can talk also about fixed wireless access in general, which is, I think, uh, a way to leapfrog the need for wireline connectivity in many countries. Uh, so that's, that's also an interesting one. Uh, and in general, I think really CSPs with all the changes and the mergers, etc., that are happening have really to take a step at thinking, how do I provide more services to my customer, whether it's by a portfolio of devices or a portfolio of services relating to security or optimizing connectivity or offering variety of profiles, right? Because the localization requirement is, is quite important there uh, in some markets, uh, such as uh, Brazil or Turkey or, or markets like that. So really take a, a strong look at differentiation uh, for those extra features outside of the pure connectivity. I think is really important and Keegan is definitely here to help them uh, on that journey. So the best is yet to come, but CSPs need to be making decisions today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Thank you.